Hey guys, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We're up to 635 episodes this week, which is June 30, 2021. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Holmstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spruenberg. No NPR. No NPR voice. Good. Keep no. the energy level high. And you can find out when we go live for events like this exact podcast recording session that we're broadcasting live on YouTube for some reason. I think we're masochists. Uh, but you can go to pcper.com slash subscribe and find out when we're going to do stuff like this in advance. Usually about an hour in advance. It was about half an hour tonight. Um, and support the site at patreon.com slash pcper. Become one of our patrons. A patron of you know, the, the PC Per Arts. The patrons are holding strong with us. Excellent. I have to say respect. They're Thank not leaving in much. droves. That's good. They're that's not. What, that's leaving what we want to hear. Weirdly enough, no matter how many times we do this show, they're still with us. So I don't know. It's kind of kind of weird. Yeah. I don't have anybody new to announce, but if somebody goes in and changes their name, I will definitely read what you wrote and then I might read it out loud. That's confusing. Let's move to the most important segment of the week. Laramie, Wyoming. Josh, switching cameras. Burger of the week. Okay, so this was uh, this was different than I've I've really ever had there, but it's the the concept is not hard. This week it it apparently was the pizza burger. Two buns, two patties. Fresh mozzarella, marinara sauce, and then topped with pepperoni slices. It was it was a burger and a pizza combined. And again, that was a huge chunk of mozzarella. You can't really see it, but it was there. And the fries were were okay, just merely okay today. I didn't really have any of the nice, good fat ones. They're all pretty small, like the, you know, like the, the leftovers almost when you're getting the end of the fries and then and, and you need to fry up some more. But other than that, you know, it was it was good, but I'm not just a huge regular pizza fan anyway, but you had to try it. But it was it was still still good. And there will be people who like it. I just might never get it again. Are we ready to start dumping on Microsoft. I know I am, but let's talk about Windows 11, the debacle that is Windows 11, an operating system that isn't even out yet. There's a dev version out. We had the big announcement a week or so ago. Of course, if you've followed the Windows 11 saga so far, you know that they are requiring, among other things, an eighth generation or newer Intel processor. Zen 1 CPUs are excluded. And you have to have a TPM 2.0 chip, not just 1.2, which has been around a lot longer, as in more boards, but 2.0, which is, I think, a standard that wasn't even ratified until 2015 and is, has not been mm-hmm. common since about 2018, in laptops Dell. especially. Dell, Dell, I mean, Dell sure has hands. a lot of 2.0. Yeah. But Lots. in the last three years, right? Did they have a lot of TPM no, 2.0 in 2000? No, we've got five-year-old laptops and that have TPM 2.0. Okay, yep. hey, good and for Dell then. Laptop. They'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. But for... I think in the 5470 and onwards, maybe in a little bit before that. Yeah. Anyway, the people were discovering to their chagrin that even newer machines couldn't run this because Microsoft had released this PC check tool, like see if you're eligible for a Windows 11 upgrade because it's a free update. It's really just Windows 10.1, but they're calling it Windows 11. As PC World and others have reported, the health check has been pulled. They pulled it. They're looking for broader CPU support. They're not quite sure yet if they're going to go as far back as 7th gen Intel. Oh, my. But, you know, right now it's 8th gen and up and Zen 2 So and 2019 up. and newer. Yeah. I mean. More or less. Two Two freaking years. Because a high-end PC from 2017 is just not capable of running an update to Windows 10. Um, I'm wondering what kind of like super you, telemetry they have that requires all that extra hardware power. But or disk-level encryption or something like that. Come on, you can do that easily on much older kit. I'm just reaching for something. 
Mm, no idea. You are. And yeah, you, I know. <laughs> if you look at, uh, here's Throt.com reporting on the 28th, Microsoft may change the Windows 11 minimum system requirements, and he goes on about it, but ultimately, they're backpedaling. They're beginning to backpedal already. Like, is this, I, this seems like the worst time ever to be forcing people to upgrade hardware, first of all. It's oh, hard yeah. to find the CPU you want. Everything's in mm-hmm. short supply. Prices are high. Hey, hey good, good luck in finding a TPM module because the scalpers yep. already bought them all. They, yeah, they, they went from 20 to to $100 in a yes. day. Windows 11. What do you think? You think they're going to backpedal and, and, and allow as... Oh, do you think they would ever allow even Skylake? Because if they go 7th gen, Skylake high-end desktop is Skylake. Seventh gen. So it's and then, why wouldn't you allow a sixty seven hundred K if you're allowing a seventy seven hundred K? At what point? I don't know. When did when did they implement their version of FTPM, the the CPU based TPM that that actually uses the Intel? It's been a little longer engine. than that. The, the Intel version. Yeah. Uh, um, I forget what Intel. It's been a while. It. It's something stupider. PPF. No, it's called um, PFF. No. I know what you're Oh, talking. come on. Yeah, anyway. Oh. <laughs> Secure. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Platform, right extension, speed. PTT. PTT. See, I was pretty close with the PFF. Yeah, you, you were PTT. damn close. P- I'm down with PTT. <laughs> yeah, you know me. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I, I like Jeremy's PFD. article this take on it because if they don't change their requirements it literally is going to just turn into mountains of e-waste as people the just... best one the best requirement that no one is actually bringing up but is a thing your laptop is required to have a front facing webcam on it required? if you bought a gaming laptop that did not have a webcam front facing on it you're not allowed to run windows 11 wow there are people who specifically and it's not just shite webcam it's got to be a 1080p or better <laughs> for what a 1090p <laughs> a 10 well 1080 a 1090 well, ti a, a 1090 ti exactly. webcam yeah. windows hello obviously don't make that an uh, effing requirement microsoft apparently it will be there are uh, people your who tpm key for BitLocker will probably be tied to this nostril hair yeah <clears throat> When you get into biometrics and facial recognition, there are people who are very leery of that kind of stuff. Apparently, they're going to be the ones who are clinging to Windows 10 like there are some people who still cling to Windows XP. There's not a single laptop in my where I work that does not have a piece of tape or a specific gadget that's been bought to physically cover over right. that 720p webcam yeah. because Dell doesn't do 1080s. So as long as it it's recognizes still, that it's there yeah. and you have it covered, then you're okay? But it's 720p, Possibly? maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's 720p. There's, there's because... going to be scripts that just fake a camera. Yeah. What People, corporation yeah. is going to spend extra on an HD on the HD option? Which is the other great part about this is, None. yeah, you've got a 90% market share, the vast majority of which is business. Now, Microsoft was a little bit upset about the slowness of the adoption of Windows 10, seeing as how it's still going on to this day. You're going to go to the bean counters and say, so yeah, we just did a total laptop refresh two years ago. Uh, and we're really appreciative of that. But in order to run Windows 11, we're going to have to buy everyone else a brand new laptop again. Oh, and probably buy a little couple of little extra modules because, you know, you might not be able to enable TPM in the way that they want to in the BIOS because, you know, OEM BIOSes are a little bit interesting. Uh, and oh, by the way, it'll probably automatically trigger BitLocker. And since we use a different type of encryption software, that generally leads to brick drives. Oh no, this is going to be an easy sell. If they thought Windows 10 adoption was pathetic, they have no idea what's coming here. And that is part of what Hackaday was going on about: is the amount of e-waste that this is going to create it is obnoxious. Like, the people are going to be throwing things away left, right, and center, and we're already in a horrible position where, you know, there's literal mountains of garbage and kids, you know, whose life is, and our, actually, our stuff is dependent on them going and stripping stuff out so that we can get a hold of the rear metals and gold and that again to put in the new generation of processor, which you can't even get a hold of at this exact moment. You know, I, really I wonder if, 
I wonder if Microsoft's just throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks mm-hmm. and what kind of response they're getting because they're getting a response. Oh, they are. And it would be silly of them to start, uh, well, to not take advantage of, of the feedback that they're getting. Um, cause you know, some very large CTOs, uh, well, not speaking, you know, physically large CTOs, but CTOs of large companies are, uh, are, are calling them up and, and their product managers and, and their reps and saying, you know, what's this, this is not good. This is, you know, a massive, uh, amount of money that we'd be spending and we're just still getting out of a pandemic. But hey, we probably got a loan from the government, so and we didn't have to pay it back. Mm. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So hey, go- fine. government. But we got better things to do with that. They're also a big buyer, and they're not going to get on board with with enforced particular kinds of encryption. They still nope. want to be able to do their own. So, yeah, that's well, not going to fly very well there either. At one point, it seemed like Microsoft was willing to do just about anything to get people onto Windows 10. They. Mm-hmm threatened and cajoled they even installed what was essentially malware on people's computers the adoption of windows 10 if they hadn't forced the issue i think 8.1 was just fine for a lot of people it brought back the start menu they ran okay they might be doing the same thing with windows 11 because it's like oh look we gave you windows 8 everyone hates it no one can actually use it but here's 8.1 and all of a sudden everyone loves it because it is so amazing in comparison to what you were just dealing with. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. What if Windows 11 is intended to be such an onerous, unpleasant CF that they look back at Windows 10 and say, no, 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 my Windows 10, just like all the Windows XP holdouts. Well, instead of e-waste, maybe it's an opportunity for a Linux remaking company to step in and hoover all those up and they, they want, issue well, them as Linux <laughs> desktops. It, <laughs> but why? Windows 11 runs Android apps natively. You don't even need it anymore. Because <laughs> that's something we've all it, asked for, right? <laughs> is it just me who looks at this stuff and just shakes my head because I just I feel like I can see how obvious it is that they have Apple envy and PC hardware enthusiasts who scorn and deride Apple would be surprised by this. Why is the company, why is the multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar business... That Microsoft has and the massive market share that they have. Why are they concerned with what Apple is doing? Yeah. Well, it's the money. They they see what Apple's making in the software side, and their Windows Store has not taken off. No. And then if suddenly you have a computer and you can run some of your favorite Android apps and you can buy them for three dollars, four dollars, whatever then Microsoft's getting a tremendous amount of money that they used to not get. Because Epic will tell you exactly how much Apple is making, and it's billions a year Oh yeah, in software. They're 30% cut, all those devices. And, I mean, currently they're making it more attractive by saying you can put whatever app it is up on the Windows Store and we're not going to take any cut. Well, right now, now, yes. For now. If they had Unless better adoption, yeah, if they had yeah, higher sales through the Windows Store, then I think they would charge a cut. But the, the rest of the online stores are 20 to 30%. Amazon, yeah. Google's, Android, Apple, obviously. But that, that, that money that you spend to get it up there is actually a value add to you. Hmm. I don't know what Valve's cut is. <laughs> the 20, 25. Yeah. I think it's 25. No, it's not unusual. Because Epic blathers about being slightly less. <laughs> yeah. At least with Windows 11, the one good thing I've I've gleaned so far is that with Windows 11, even though it cuts out 32-bit CPU support, which you know, it, 64-bit CPUs are quite oh. old at this point. Been there, been there, done that. Yeah. So, but they have not cut out 64-bit or 32-bit software support like Apple did with Big Sur. Right. So right. if you're on an Apple platform and you're running their latest operating system, just you're screwed. Because, yeah, you've got uh, on the new M1 processors, you have Rosetta 2 to run x86 code, but only if it was properly signed uh, 64-bit application that was approved for Big Sur on x86. But on one hand, as an engineer, I admire their their cutting off of technical debt. Who? There's a certain... Microsoft or Apple? No, Apple. Apple. Breaking breaking news. Stop everything. Brett admires (laughs) Apple for something. 
It, Sorry, it, please continue. In all honesty, from an engineering perspective, from a purely technical state, no matter how painful it was, cutting off technical debt is a good thing. It is reasonable. It a reasonable thing. They to can try do it do. because they don't have the market share. They can say, you know what? For our eight percent of the PC world out there, or whatever it is, six to ten yeah, percent at any it, given point whatever. in time, it's, we can do this. We're going to take away the floppy drive. Sure. And the six percent of you out there who use one of our computers just need to understand that oh. we're doing this for your benefit. I, down the I road. I hate to tell you, I hate to point this out, but the rest of the industry eventually falls in I, line. Because with of Apple envy, do. Apple is the trendsetter. <laughs> They're the cool yeah. kid in high school, and they come in wearing something ridiculous, and suddenly all the other kids are wearing it. I so don't have to make any excuses. Apple it is what it is. comes out with the T2 chip and talks about how all of their machines are ultra secure for all of these mm. reasons, mm. and then Microsoft says, "Well." I'm just waiting for W1 silicon. I joked about this earlier on Twitter. Like, I think you- <laughs> rumor, Windows will be exclusive <laughs> to Microsoft's first custom silicon, the W1 chip. The, the W1. Well, I mean, considering how a lot of their current Surface tablets won't be able to run Windows 11, they're obviously going to have to come up with something new. So that might be the opportunity they're looking for. It's trendy. Google is coming out with custom silicon for their next Pixel phone. Uh, Apple has custom silicon, obviously, on iOS forever and in, on iOS devices and now on their Macs. So, yeah, but it was NVIDIA that actually went out and bought a custom silicon company. Well, so did Apple. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, yes, right. My That's fair. EA Semi is Semi. what started all of this for yeah. me, But I'm trying to think. Yeah. Who, who who did NVIDIA buy? I mean, other than Nicera? Arm. Well, no, they haven't bought them yet. I mean, plus, the biggest, they don't make custom well, okay, cores. Fair. They just make... The IP that's in almost everything. The yeah. design. They do. Yeah. Design, yeah. yeah. It's like literally they, that's the grandfather of customization. Mm-hmm. But yes, technically correct. They didn't buy them yet. Right. The, things are going to get weird. Things are already weird. I just, weird are going to? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. And I'm one of those people who doesn't even use my secure house lately? So I'm just like, mm. I don't want to build a PC with a TPM enabled and secure boot. And Who bought Killer Networking? Who is that? Somebody just said Intel. it in Discord. Oh, okay. Intel. Intel. Rivet Networks. Oh, makers yeah. of Killer Networking products. Yeah. So all the Intel stuff is now killer. So it's the Intel Rivet. Killer 1675X. You know, that kind of a thing. Yeah, like that first generation Threadripper I've got is like, the, I think the last time you'd see Killer down uh, AMD. Do we have any other thoughts on Windows 11, or should we move on to story number two? They have worked to do. We'll be talking about it long enough. This was a feel-good story. I had received an email in advance from HP, and Jeremy was kind enough to get this up. HP, do you remember back in like CES 2015 or so, and Ryan was holding up this ultra-light laptop? It's almost comical how light this is. That it was so light, it felt like one of those department store dummies, like it was just like hollow plastic. And HP now has one of those like sub two pound ultra light magnesium laptops. And it's an all Ryzen machine of all things. Mm-hmm. The Pavilion 13 Aero. Under one kilogram, all AMD, as in it's an AMD CPU, AMD GPU. I wonder how much these things cost. Did they have that? You in know, whenever, the press whenever release? I see, whenever I see magnesium, I I always think, what if I apply four hundred seventy three degrees Celsius to it? Well, oh my gosh, Josh, the there's a mix of aluminium in it too, so it will be interesting. Oh, that would be awesome! Right? It what's will that, keep you what's warm aluminium again? Night. What's, what's Alamillion? Oh, do you mean don't, aluminum? Don't act like you don't know. How many Johnny Ive presentations <laughs> have you know. watched? Aluminium. I'm he not seeing any chamfered edges on this. Oh, no, I'm seeing the won't. opposite of chamfered edges. Yeah. Those are the opposite. That's that's like a, the Frank Lloyd Wright of chamfered edges. <laughs> but listen I to like how the USB specs. plugs pop out. Yeah, that, it's and not they're the, It's not a network plug that pops. The USB they're, plug has to pop. They're actual Type A ports. There's yep. two Type yeah. A's and a Type C and a full size HDMI and an SD or it's a micro SD, but they have an SD card. Weird house. Yeah, and there's a separate power, so you don't have to use up that USB C to power it. Oh my goodness! Hmm. 
You what can. will we think of next? <laughs> and oh, and on top guts. of everything else, I was like, man, this sounds great. And then I found out it had a 1610 aspect ratio screen. Oh, and I was even yeah, more well, sold you, on it. Now you've got my interest. 2304 by 1440. Peak brightness of 400 Well, unless nits. they fudged it. That's the technical for their, okay. their uh, EHD at that. Because, uh, okay. yeah, unfortunately, under the uh, pricing and tech specs was a please check back later, closer to release, and we will update it. And it still said that the last time I looked. Okay. But it's it's nice that a really premium option is coming out. And typically this kind of stuff comes out and it's got like a powered by Intel logo in the lower right hand corner of all of the press materials. And this one is no, it's all AMD. And I'm shocked nice. that you didn't make a comment about the uh, keycap material. So he says it? that's one of your fetishes of who it's you, you fetishize the keyboards a bit. Not as much as nope. some. Not as no. I think you're confusing me with uh, Chris. Is it formalized? Oh, Chris. Is that it's that ocean bound plastic? Oh, okay. What? Okay. It's how does made it, out how of does ocean it bound. <laughs> probably a little uh, <laughs> slimy. Does, <laughs> but yeah, I guess you said they, ocean they flew bound, out. not yeah. from the. They ocean. They flew out to that giant ocean or the the giant island of plastic crap in the middle of the ocean. Okay. Scooped some of it out and made the it's plastic. It's made out of those of those six pack uh, plastic holders. The, the those that's made key may key or key may key not key contain key. turtle. Weird. Somebody, uh, uh, David, mm. in the chat uh, is is it Windows eleven ready? Uh, uh, no, oh, yeah. actually, no. This just in. Mm. It's not. It's not supported. There's some arbitrary uh, reason why it's not. I'm sorry. See, you I don't know. If, did they put no, a camera no, no. at the top because they got the ultra thin bezels now? So oh, I don't know. It might no, they put it at the base the like Dell used to do. Yeah. Ah, the nose cam. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring nose cam. 1080p nose cam technology. <clears throat> when are they going to bring back Bakelite? That was what I was trying to think of. Oh, I miss that. Bakelite. And it, well, Bakelite I mean, laptop. That, Bakelite, that phone is still there. I mean, the color's yeah. faded on it, but it's still there. It, it hasn't degraded at all. Yeah. We'll pause now. You're here. To hear from our podcast sponsor. Say goodbye to repetitive text entry, spelling, and message errors, or sometimes even trying to remember the right thing to say. Text Expander makes it easy to give your team the right words for every situation. Whether you need to keep legal happy or delight customers with effective answers, you can rest easy knowing your team has it covered. Text Expander removes the repetition out of work so you can focus on what matters most. The newest version of Text Expander has improved statistics reporting for organizations with date ranges for enterprise and individuals, so you can track just how much time your team is saving. Text Expander can be used in any platform, any app, really pretty much anywhere you need to type. Create powerful snippets that'll save you time so that all you type is a short abbreviation and bam, Text Expander does the rest of the typing for you. And once you've created your snippets, share them with your team so everyone that works on projects with you is on the same page. This is how Text Expander can help keep your team consistent, accurate, and current. Text Expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad. Right now, our show listeners can get 20% off their first year. So visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more. That's TextExpander.com slash podcast for 20% off your first year. Moving along to our hey. next news story. New story. Which stories. is, okay, these things, you might, what, what would you guess these were at first glance if you didn't know what they were? Don't look at the uh, uh, external HEPA hard drive. filter. Um, air, air purifiers. But yes. That's a HEPA filter. It looks like an air purifier. But these are these two devices together. So you're saying I shouldn't shuck my hard drives out of that? Uh, I don't know if they have hard drives in them. You remember well, Apple, Brett would Western know this. Digital, Apple sold routers with hard drives out. in them. At one uh, point. They did. If it's a Western Digital, though, run, run away. Yes, turn yes. It off, no, this is an it. Asus. This is the Zen so Wi Fi ET8. And even though it's ET8, it's all about 6, because this is 6 gigahertz. This is a Wi-Fi 6E mesh network. These two devices work in conjunction with each other. And you might be thinking, oh, yeah, but you lose bandwidth when you have to communicate. No, no, no. You know about backhaul. If your backhaul you know back is Wi-Fi, Extra you lose Wi-Fi channels built into these things. Not two, not four, seven. Oh. It says here, I find this, this is just incredible. Featuring a new 6 gigahertz frequency band with up to 7 extra 160 megahertz channels that massively increases device capacity and reduces network latency. Can you imagine? And if you could get... And here's the, the um, transmit-receive 
Uh, two by two at two point four. Two by two at five. Okay. Four by four at six gigahertz. Oh. So four transmit, four receive lanes of one hundred and sixty megahertz channels. I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it with a six antenna setup. You'd, I I am. I don't know enough about routers to know if you can do that without or, eight or antennas. Or what frequencies they're using. They're not allowed to kind of just go like, oh, let's just pick a frequency. That's very tightly controlled by the FCC as to what frequencies they're allowed. Well, so whatever they're doing, to... it's apparently capable of up to 4,804. Don't forget the four megabits four. per second. Uh, is that outbound to the clients or is that backhaul between them? Uh, that that's the four by four or six connection. Do okay. you have to wrap your house in a metal mesh? You you would think this. that the 160 hertz channel does, on six does gigahertz. Amazon, is, does Amazon does Amazon sell that right now? This right now does Asus get a cut? It, it will Go be ahead. on Amazon next month. It is. Guess how much this is? Think of all the capabilities. Five hundred fifty dollars. Wow, Josh is very close. But yeah, by actually, Price is Right rules, you lose. It's the closest without going over, and I've already given too much away. Brett, how much? Uh, 572. You just went higher than Josh. <laughs> Have you ever watched Wheel of Fortune? Or not Wheel of Fortune, I Price is Right. Have you ever watched Price is Right? Have you ever watched The Price is Right? I thought, thought you said right? he was close. I said oh, it's the closest without going over. <laughs> right. One dollar. <laughs> One dollar. Jeremy wins. <laughs> Jeremy, ah! son of a bitch. Jeremy wins with the one dollar bid. This is five hundred and twenty nine U.S. dollars. <sighs> Goes on sale next month. But think of the capabilities. I don't even know if a four by four six gigahertz adapter exists for a PC. Right. Or what it would even be. Two by yeah. two five gigahertz devices are the fastest I've used. So. And it has a 2.5 gigahertz or 2.5 GBE port on the back, but that's all. That's the WAN. So I was excited about that when I realized, oh, that's the WAN, and the three LAN ports are um, just probably just gigabit. gigabit. They're gigabit. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, you could get you, you could get a different mesh network, maybe not pay so much because wired backhaul is better. Wired probably backhaul more... isn't wireless, Brett. Yeah, but it's still better. It's more. This, okay, Assistant. I will say in their defense, and I will, I'll have to see if they're sampling this because I find it interesting. What, because it's supposed to be like the super easy setup, you just use an app like Google Wi Fi, only yeah. it doesn't suck like Google Wi Fi. Next news story this is from Jeremy Aqua Computer Leak Shield Water Cooling with Peace of Mind. Tell me more. So, how comfortable would you feel having a vacuum inside of your computer? Uh, as in, like, negative pressure. Like a Kirby? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no, good no. to use a good practice to vacuum Kirby. out your computer. So, yes, I'd be very confident. Like those minivans that came with the integrated vacuum cleaner yeah. in them. Yeah, yeah no, just like it, that. It, it, it's not exactly because what this is, it, it's a water cooling system, but it's got a vacuum pump in it. Not a positive pressure pump like everything else in the world. What's the problem? The idea is that, and if you pop over to the review, uh, and I forget which page it's on, uh, the the action one, there's a little video of it. So the idea is that uh, assuming you've bought the correct tubing that doesn't collapse while it's under uh, negative pressure, if you spring a hole in your water cooling loop, it's going to notice this, and it's going to actually maintain a negative pressure so that all that's happening is instead of a fluid leaking out into your system air is being pumped pulled in to your water cooling loop so in order to pull this off of course uh you there you go right there leak shield on pokey the hole leak shield off and components are a little bit unhappy so it's interesting. Uh, you have to follow some very specific rules. Obviously, if you throw a second pump in the loop, this is not going to work. You, you need to use theirs. They have software to adaptively monitor uh, pressure along the entire loop so that they can 
because you know not every single uh, place is going to be punctured, so they'll actually try and apply a slightly negative higher higher negative pressure to the area where it's showing showing that there is a leak going on. Uh, there's there's some additional additions where if you it detects a leak, it'll shut your system off, or if you want to actually be able to loop in some extra stuff, you you all are locked into Aqua Computer. It's a little bit annoying because. You know, being able to only source from one place kind of sucks, but at the same point, it's no no one else does this. Now, if you do mix it in, uh, so that you don't use the pure stuff, you can't use the leak shield. But at the same time, it's got a shield mode where it just monitors the pressure throughout the entire looping system still, and will just shut everything down. If you bought the adapter that shuts the machine down, um, so that yes, it's leaking, but the system is shut off. And finally, there, there's just sort of a mode that uh, will put certain areas of the loop into ambient atmospheric pressure to let you bleed out the air hole uh, that's come in from a leak or just, you know, generally appeared or to top off your coolant or whatever. So it's, it's really interesting in a way. Uh, and it is good a peace of mind that, yeah, if, if you get a little spree, that if you spring a little leak, you're actually not going to be leaking fluid all over your system. But at the same time, it, it's quite expensive, and when you purchase it, you get, I think it was a, an 18-month uh, subscription to their software updates. After that, you have to pay to continue to get software updates, which is not really a great move, but uh, a lot of companies are doing just fine by this, so why in the hell not do it? Uh, and the other part is that... Uh, the, They've designed it like a, as Woot Doc just asked. No, they've specifically designed it so that yes, if a leak happens, if air bubbles come in, it's not going to damage the pump. It's it's designed to accept this because well, it did it to itself. Uh, so it's rather interesting. They couldn't really do any uh, performance measures on it because this is more about how it works. And since you're you're going to be doing a very customized water loop with it, you know your results are definitely going to vary compared to anyone else. So it's. It's really good peace of mind for anyone that's terrified of water cooling because they don't want even non-conductive liquid free in their machine. But at the same time, it's, I don't know, I think it's a little bit overboard. It was definitely worth talking about. But for me, it seems a little bit overboard. It was great until the software thing came up. Why on earth would this require anything more than just running their monitoring software like uh, Corsair IQ? Like just something like well, that that doesn't cost anything. Do you think Corsair IQ can deal with negative pressures and, uh, I, uh, you know, monitor what's look, going on? The subscription thing just seems wrong. Oh, I don't, I don't disagree. I do not disagree at all, but uh, it's also been very uh, successful for some other companies. Right, but how many of them are water cooler manufacturers? Selling negative pressure loops. You'd want to drive adoption of this. Why would you drive people away by saying, oh, by the way, you have to that's pay for the point. month, per, per yes. month to use yes. this? Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> okay. Well, MBAs, they ruin everything, don't, especially don't German really MBAs. Mm. Yeah. They don't make the worst. Don't make liquid cooling a freemium business model, <laughs> please. Huh. All right. Hack a day. This is great. Hack a day. Jeremy posted this. A Lego microscope. Yeah. This is this is great. A really an actual functioning microscope made out of Lego. And an iPhone 6S lens. Really? An that's, iPhone 6S the, lens, the lens is lens good that... enough to do this? I I mean it's it's I, I, something that you would build with your child to get them interested right, yeah. uh, in microscopy. But so it's not amazing. They, they, if you really want, they do have a link in this to a build instruction for a lab grade one. That one you're probably not going to be building with your kid. Mm -hmm. uh, the other really fun thing about this is that they were smart enough to set it up exactly like you were buying a yes, Lego <laughs> kit. And so everything is there, the parts, the steps, how to do it, uh, nice. step by step by step. Uh, if, have you ever run into, uh, uh, what do they call them? LDR files. No. So an LDR file is something that you can upload to the Lego site and it will actually give you a list of, here are all the parts you need. 
here's the price for them. Or if you want, here are the kits that will probably contain them already. You know, hmm. assuming you don't wow. have a big giant bucket of Lego already. I like so the yeah, the, the, Lego's gotten pretty smart on this whole, you know, they, they, they've gone 3D printing a different way. But it's like literally you upload it and they're like, here's your project stuff, away you go. If you don't happen to have an ancient uh, lens uh, that's, you know, going to work from, from an old cell phone, they do list uh, like a 34.5 millimeter F plus 106 millimeter lens. You can purchase it for relatively cheap. But if you got an old dead cell phone, chances are that that lens is going to be good enough for, you know, looking at uh, bugs really close up, for taking a look at uh, a human hair. You know, like the Fisher-Price microscopes that we used to get when we were kids. I, I just think this is amusing as hell because if you're that type of parent, you probably have a giant bucket of Lego sitting around, uh, even though the Illuminator is from an old Lego kit. Although you might want to buy a fancier one because the better the light quality coming up, the the better you're going to be able to see. But like for literally almost nothing and a couple hours work, you, you can build yourself a little Lego powered microscope and play around with it. Micro Center, this is on TechSpot. Micro Center apologizes for what? For insulting well, AMD graphics cards? Yes, the CEO Rick to their face? The, was, yeah, publicly. Oh, this is scandalous. The CEO Rick, uh, his name is Rick Mershad, uh, in his um, blog wrote a not very complimentary description of the support and care and feeding that you need to give to AMD GPUs, whereas the NVIDIA ones are plug and play. A lot like you know, console video games. I think that analogy is hysterical considering that the latest, hottest console games are obviously completely powered by AMD. So the fact that somebody from Micro Center, the president no less, would under his umbrella post something like, oh yeah, you guys definitely want to buy NVIDIA because AMD just takes too much care and feeding, is just stupid on so many levels. They're biting the hand that feeds them. It's just a, the wrong it's, thing for them to do. And they're backpedaling like mad on this. Good. Well, yeah, they'd have to. What an oh, inane yeah. statement. And to even bring consoles up at all, it's not just the latest. It's yes. the last couple of generations of game consoles. Agreed. Starting with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, and then all of their follow-on consoles, like the PS4 mm -hmm. Pro and Xbox One X. Xbox 360 was right. AMD graphics powered. Yep. To, was it to make that comparison yeah. is is ridiculous to say oh buy an nvidia card because it runs just like a console don't get the amd card oh you're gonna have to kind of do stuff to that to make that work well is apparently it just, they it just gotta... sounds like this is a guy who's used nvidia graphics cards in his personal oh. system and just remembers all of the old rhetoric about yeah, ati maybe. amd graphics cards and their bad driver support and well but, apparently no, you the, may have gotten the nvidia graphics call. cards function much like video game consoles is like the best out of that <laughs> it's that, that's greatest. just great now obviously they've they've gone way back on this and said oh yeah there it must have been like nvidia uh, intern uh at the at micro center yeah we didn't mean to post that we didn't vet that it, it had spelling errors clearly we never looked at it but it was the ceo's twitter account yeah i believe so something like that yeah or his or his blog i don't yeah, remember where it i came haven't from specifically but they, they went on and on about how AMD wasn't supporting things like ray tracing and, and DLSS-like uh, technologies while completely ignoring their inroads with uh, Fidelity FX and the fact that ray tracing is actually on consoles to support okay. it to some extent. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ray tracing yeah. looks really good on consoles sometimes. So, I mean, to come out with this as a major retailer, a, a favored retailer. And favored only with those elite cork sniffers who live near <coughs> one and rub it in everybody else's <coughs> nose that they don't <coughs> now i never do that do yeah, i yeah right yeah i probably do all right well no, he sniffs the cap <laughs> nobody cap corks sniffer. anymore i'm sorry all right you're well, only mad because you don't live near one that's your fault i have one in michigan and it's <laughs> like two hours and 45 minutes away if i'm driving like a crazy person there's no it's construction not which there always is construction all right okay Let's move on to Pixel. We're blaming on the Russians. But I just Picks wanted to say, I can't, I got out in front of dumping on Micro Center. Of the week. Okay. Josh is first. Go. All right. So uh, if you've got a Dell laptop, we've been talking about those a lot lately, and you want an inexpensive memory upgrade, 
do not buy these modules. They just don't work. I've tried everything to get the old Clev <laughs> Hynix. Oh, no. Even though the, the, the Dells come They're with Hynix, you know, Hynix, those same Hynix chips, they've done something with this that they don't even boot up on Dells. Jeez. And it's just awful. So, yeah, I got to return those and get others. Look at those four and a half star 61 ratings. Oh, man. I, I'm crap. sure none of Don't those are fake. Dell. Damn Lenovo users. None. Josh, are these just are these four chip single sided modules also? I don't know. No, 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 no <laughs> I didn't get that chips. far. No, yeah. I never looked at the other side. I didn't turn Slap it Slap them in, you know, spit on them, <laughs> rub them in the dirt. <sighs> Did you have them in upside down? Uh, yes. Whoa, whoa, the sale is still going on? How long is the sale going on? Not to, you, know, uh, you know, they're keyed, by the way. You can't put them in the upset. <laughs> they don't fit. I know. All right. Uh, well, with a hammer. If you, if you try hard enough, yes. anything will fit into any slot. Hmm. Uh, that was not in you, window. All right. Uh, Jeremy, your pick, I think. Yep. I mean, if at this point you don't have basic benchmarking tools, you should probably top on to Steam. Because for essentially about ten bucks, you'll get 3D Mark, PC Mark, and VR Mark. Wow, that's cheap. done. Away you go. Eighty-nine uh, percent off. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, it says eighty-five percent off. I guess if you get yeah. the bundle, it's even more. Uh, some of their DLCs are a little bit uh, cheaper as well, and then the the brand new uh, PC Mark that they just came out with is free. Yes, the um, new if CPU you, if you testing have tool. But uh, some of the ray tracing ones are still going to cost you an extra buck or two, but again, are also on sale. But if you just want the basic ability to be able to say, my computer can do this compared to yours, it's 10 bucks. Just grab it. It, it. It's totally worth it. Okay, who's next? Right. Yeah, this, this sale I just noticed is unfortunately only for the next few hours or until they sell out. But it's like $45 off a pretty nice, nice looking as well as reasonably functioning uh, 240 AIO. 80 bucks is pretty good for a, a name brand like NZXT, and a lot of people like this sort of infinity mirror look. Um, so hop on over to Woot, and over the next couple hours, pick one up for 80 okay. bucks. Being ignorant Straight up. on Woot, it says yes. it's Prime Week, Prime exclusive, and it's fulfilled by Amazon. Is this just well, I mean, who doesn't have Prime, Amazon? Right? No, Amazon actually... Amazon owns Woot, so stuff oh, okay. that's fulfilled right. fulfilled through Woot is essentially you know an Amazon company. You know, that's the deal. I there. gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Forgot. But it's a really good price, sure. actually, for for the na- a name brand AIO like that. Uh, and people kind of like the way that that mirror Infinity Mirror RGB kind of thing you know looks. So it's one hundred and thirty bucks normally ish. So eighty bucks is a pretty good deal. Okay, my pick this week. I actually have two because I didn't have a pick last week. Probably not the week before or earlier, uh, either. The return of the bamboo dish rack. What? Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but behind me, I have these bamboo dish racks with, like, graphics cards. And you can't see, but I even have motherboards on these things up on the top shelf out of view. And they're quite handy for storing motherboards, graphics cards, sound cards. So... I ordered an. By the uh, way, I, I do like your set. golden, your golden orb up there. The that's the thermal tape cooler on my 900 megahertz, or is this mm. the 950? Slot AMD Athlon. Athlon. Yep. Slot. I a. had one of those. I had one of those. They were a great cooler for the time. And it looks like a camera. You know, it, it looks like a lens. Yep. There's the thumbnail. I did like the mounting mechanism <laughs> for slot A's. <laughs> It was for, a lot easier to deal with than a lot of the other ones. Yeah. That's the reason that I started with slot A. Is I got into building PCs in 2002 into 2003. Oh. And I was terrified of the socket A CPUs because of how much money I'd be spending. Because back then, even spending $100 on a CPU was big money for me. And oh, if I'm you like, never drove a, drove a screwdriver through a motherboard while you were trying to mount Not all the way through. Uh, cooler but yeah. on. My first build, it was harrowing. And, of course, I sliced my finger open on the inside of the case. And Anyway, these were much easier to deal with because they slid in just like slot one. Slid in, you lock them in place, and you're good. Away you go. Lock it to me. Okay. So, anyway, bamboo 
dish racks. They're on Amazon and they're great for holding opponents. But my thing I was actually excited about, I've been looking for one of these things for a long time. Uh, How long? Try to rem- uh, two or three years. Try to remember. Uh, twenty. It's twenty five years ago. This was on Reddit a few months ago. The twenty fifth anniversary of AMD Interwave. Back when AMD was producing a chip, a sound card solution, and there's the most ridiculous. I found they linked. Not to only the, has the Argus been released by fans of the Vogons. Oh, those were strange times. Yes, though no, there there was a clone uh, Gravis Ultrasound card released using this, and actually the late. Gravis Ultrasound cards used AMD's Interwave chip, at least certain revisions of them. It was like the Gravis Ultrasound plug-and-play. I actually found an Interwave card. They're, they're super rare. You won't even find one on eBay right now. The only one that's on there is actually an Ultrasound. Compaq had them. The reason I know about them is because I, I have a Compaq Presario 8702 desktop that I inherited many years ago from somebody that originally shipped with Interwave and... It would always try to set up the interwave with the restore media, but it wasn't there because they'd put in some like clone sound blaster card instead. And I didn't get the interwave card with the machine, and I have never been able to find one. Very nice lady in Melbourne sends it to me. I have it right here. I have in this anesthetic bag. Wow. Have you opened it? Have you opened it? I have. I just opened okay. it very carefully so it didn't break the anesthetic sticker. But this is, let me ground myself, hold on. This sticker, not this sticker, this card. It's a holy grail. It's so rare. Ooh. It's so rare. It seems so innocuous, but there is an AMD, there is an AMD chip on this. But you can find out more by going to AMD's website and looking at their interwave audio processors. This this is not AMD's website, or... Yes, it is. It's, I mean, it's it's a cached sort of, version of it. Sort of. <laughs> but last I mean, for 97, that's not a bad-looking website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still is for 97, yeah. Let's see what the current <laughs> patch situation is. Okay, so, you know, the first computer I actually, you know, got a credit Tie card fighter. and bought myself. Um, Mech Warrior 2. Was 1996. I, I ordered it. I went to the Olympics. When I got back home, it was waiting for me. Oof. And so it makes me feel really, really old when you're saying 25 years ago. 25 years ago is when I finally got into PCs full time. I feel old. Hey, yeah. Josh, you did your interview. You did what? an interview a year or two ago with Kevin Crewell, right? Correct. Now, I had a brief exchange with him about Interwave. And he's like, I think I have one of those somewhere. And I just like, what? And I was... I kept debating like do i send him a dm and ask him to sell it to me do i send him a dm and ask him to sell it to me mm-hmm. i never did but because i'm like i'll just find one on ebay and then i did i found one it was 90 95 dollars buy it now i bought it and i waited i waited and then two or three days later the seller's like yeah we can't find it we're canceling your order like no 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 no, keep no. looking, <laughs> keep looking, keep looking. <laughs> all right well that's our show this week tune in again next week for more lively discourse about pc hardware Maybe we'll have some Windows 11 updates. Maybe Microsoft will do some more backpedaling. I don't know. But until then, good night. Hey, good night. Hey, good night. Hey, good night. Hey, good night.